Happy Chinese New Year. This problem comes from a Chinese high school Olympiad. N is an integer greater than 2, and we have the sets A1, A2, all the way up to A2N, which are pairwise distinct, and they're all subsets of the integers 1 up to N. We want to determine the maximum value of this sum here. It's the sum from I equals 1 to 2N of the cardinality of the intersection between AI and AI plus 1, divided by the cardinality of AI times the cardinality of AI plus 1. So cardinality just means the number of elements in the set. And here, just for clarification, A2N plus 1 just means A1. So uh, up here, when I is 2N, we have an I, A2N plus 1 there, which just means A1. OK, this question looks quite difficult, looks quite intimidating. But in actuality, the you know, you follow your nose, you kind of do what your gut tells you to, and you kind of cross your fingers, hope for the best, and it all works out in the end. What we're going to do is find an upper bound to this and then show that that upper bound is indeed attainable. So we're going to first analyze the thing that we're adding up, the summoned. So it's the intersection between AI and AI plus 1 in cardinality over the cardinality of AI times the cardinality of AI plus 1. Now what we're going to do is just call the numerator here x and just keep the denominator the same for the time being. Now. I want to find an upper bound to this. Well, if this set here, we notice, is a subset of AI. And so therefore, if the size of the numerator is x, we know that this guy here must have size at least x. And with the exact same logic, this set here must have size at least x. But hold on a minute. They both can't be x. Because if they were both x and the intersection had size x, that would mean that sets AI and AI plus 1 were identical. But that's not allowed because these sets are pairwise distinct. So one of these sets has to be at least x plus 1. So the denominator here multiplies to at least x times x plus 1. But that's the denominator having a lower bound, which corresponds to the whole fraction having an upper bound. So the upper bound value of this is x over x plus 1. Uh, x over x times x plus 1, sorry. OK, cool. Now, if x is 0, well, that just means that the intersection of these sets here is 0 or has size 0, in which case this whole fraction here is 0. If uh, x is not 0, well, then we can kind of cancel it here. And this is going to be 1 over x plus 1. And if x is not 0, it must be at least 1, which would cause this fraction to be here at most a half. So either x is 0 or uh, this expression is less than a half. In either case, it's at most a half. So we know that this thing that we're summing up here is less than or equal to a half for each of the terms or each of the values of i. So it's going to be at most a half times 2n, which is n. OK, great. So we've got an upper bound here to this sum. And what we're going to do now is show that this sum is indeed attainable. And we can do this just by considering um, an example. So if we choose the odd numbered set, so a2i plus uh, a2i minus one to have just one element in, namely i, and the set a2i, so the even numbered set to have the elements i and i plus one in, then both of these will satisfy the conditions. They're pairwise distinct. Um, they all have it, they're none of them are empty. And um, I guess also here we should just clarify the a2n here. So when i is n, this is n and 1, for example. Now all we need to do is show that each of these terms in the sum equals a half, and thus the sum will equal n. And this is pretty clear, because if we have ai intersect ai plus 1, like we've got here, whether i is odd or even, one of those two guys will be an odd set, one will be an even set. But in particular, the intersection will contain whatever i is, or half of that. Um, so the numerator will have size 1. And the denominator, again, one of these will be odd. In, uh, one of these will be, um, I will be, if I is odd, that will be this set, which has size one, and then that will be size two, or it's the other way around. So it's going to be one over one times two, which of course is a half. And so you're going to be adding up a half to n times, which gives you n. And so the maximum value of this sum is indeed n.